All right, guys, so let's take a look at these. So on the first types, it's asking us to convert from exponential to log form and vice versa. Well, if we have y equals e to the x, that is equivalent to if I take the natural log, I find my base, I swirl it around, and I come back to the exponent. So another way of writing y equals e to the x is the natural log of y equals x. These are inverse functions, but I can just rewrite this as a log by doing, once again, natural log, find the base, the base is e, swirl it around to the y, and then back over again to the x. <clears throat> That's the kind of thing we're doing here. We're just converting back and forth between exponential and log form. So on example one, if I want to rewrite this as a log, I could even think of it as log, regular log, base e, swirl it around, 0.63679 equals negative one. But what's another name for log base e? Just natural log. So natural log of 0.3679 equals negative one. Number two, <clears throat> we start with the natural log, so we want to rewrite this in exponential form. So we find the base, the base is e. Anytime we have a natural log, the base is e. Anytime we have a regular log, what's the base? 10. So we have a base of e here. So it's going to be e, swirl it around, 1.0986 equals, back around, 3. All right, so the next one, we have an e, so we're going to rewrite it as a log. So I can just say it's going to be log, find your base, log base e stays the base, back to this, swirl it back around to the exponent, equals 3. So another name for log base e is natural log. And you don't have to write out that log base e if you don't want to. You can go directly to the natural log. I just wanted to explain how that all works. All right, so now solving equations. Guys, one thing I hope that you remember is every equation there is can be solved on the graphing calculator. Let's say that you come across a problem like this and you have no idea how to solve it. We're going to look at how to solve it, but you can solve it on your calculator just by going to y equals. If I go to y equals, if I put the left side of this equation into my y sub 1, and if I put the right side of the equation into my l sub 2, when I look at it, I'm seeing the exponential, but I'm not seeing y equals 14. Why is that? Yep, my window has to be extended. My y value here is 14, so I need to make this go maybe to 20 so I can see it. So here's my exponential function. It's really steep there. And so now, if I want to solve this equation, I can do second, trace, calculate, and I just want to get that point of intersection, and I do enter, enter, enter. And I get an answer of 0.3153. Now, that's a decimal approximation. If I want to find the exact solution, I have to know how to solve it algebraically. The directions say, first of all, you have to isolate. So I have an e that I want to isolate, so I divide by 2. So e to the 3x plus 1 equals 7. And now I have to use my inverse function. So what's my inverse function of e? Natural log. So I do natural log base e, I don't have to write it, swirl it around, of 7 equals 3x plus 1. So to solve this for x, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. I can't subtract these, so it just stays natural log of 7 minus 1 equals 3x, divide by 3. So our exact answer is x equals natural log of 7 minus 1 over 3. That's the exact answer. 
I'm going to ask you to find the exact answer. But even if you find the approximation, I would still give you most of the points because at least you know the an answer. See, now I'm going to check this answer. I'm just going to go to my home screen and I'm going to do the natural log of 7 minus 1, get that answer, divide that answer by 3, and 0.3153. Same thing we got when we did it graphically. Okay? So I always like to do that. If I'm, you know, finish a quiz early, whatever, I'd go through and check them just that way. All right, example two. We are given a natural log function. So what do we do to solve it? We have to use the inverse, which would be what? E. So I find my base of E, and I swirl it around. So it's going to be E to the fifth equals 2x minus 3. To solve it for x, I'm going to have to add 3. So I get e to the fifth plus 3 equals 2x. Divide by 2. And so x equals e to the fifth plus 3 over 2. If I felt like I did that incorrectly, I could put that into y sub 1, that into y sub 2, find the decimal approximation, and then check to make sure that this decimal approximation is the same thing. But I want you to find the exact answers. I think the back of our book gives you approximate, but I'd rather you find the exact. When you get into later math classes, you, you know, you'll be doing extensive problems and you might get an answer like this that you have to actually store in your calculator. Do you guys know how to store in your calculator? Have I shown you that? Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll just do it again real quick. So what we do is we do e to the fifth power plus three, get that answer, divide it by two, and then if I want to store that answer, I can go here to STO, and I can store it into any letter I've got. See how all these letters are on here, A, B, C, D, etc., going down like that? So I can store it anywhere. I'm going to just choose to store it in for D. Oops, hold on. Just, you don't even, I have to use an alpha on that. Hold on. Store alpha D. So now it's going to be in there for D forever unless I change whatever else is in D. So like you could do a problem later, you need that answer, much, and then you can just go back and get it. All right, solving on this one, we're going to subtract 10. We get 40E to the negative 2X equals 20. We're trying to isolate the E, so what do we do now? Divide by 40, so E to the negative 2X equals 0.5 or 1 half. <clears throat> so now to finish it, I have to rewrite it as a log. So it's log base E, which is natural log, swirl it around, of 0.5 equals negative 2x. So then x is going to be the natural log of 0.5 divided by negative 2. That is our exact solution. Questions on that? All right. Let's review some derivatives. This is a review. We've already done the derivative of natural log of u is 1 over u times the derivative of u. This is new, though. The derivative of e to the u is e to the u times the derivative of u. It's about as easy as it gets because the derivative of e to the something is still e to the something just times whatever the derivative of that exponent is. So doing this one, the derivative of e to the u is going to be just e to the u times what? 2. So it's going to be 2e to the 2x minus 1. Number 2, the derivative of e to the u is e to the u but now I have to do the derivative of this. I'm going to have to rewrite that as negative 3x to the negative 1 to be able to find the derivative of it. So the derivative of this then is negative 3 times negative 1, which is 3x. 
and then subtract 1, which would be negative 2. Now watch how I finish this answer. Every value that is to the negative power goes to the denominator. This 3, though, it's a factor in and of itself, and it's not raised to a negative power. So the 3 is going to stay where it is. This is to a negative exponent. It goes to the bottom. This is to a negative exponent. It goes to the denominator. But the 3 just stays in the numerator because it does not have a negative exponent. Any questions on that? All right. This one is a little bit easier than the last one. Just wanted you to see that if we have a coefficient and we're taking a derivative, I don't have to use the product rule here. I can just, if it's just a, a constant, I can just bring it down. So the derivative of 4e to the u is just 4e to the u then times the derivative of the u. So what's the derivative of 3x squared? 6x. And now this 4 and this 6x can be multiplied. So I'm going to have 24e to the 3x, oops, 24x, e to the 3x squared. And then the last one. This one is a natural log. Guys, I do not want to see you trying to distribute that through. You can't do it. This means you would have to do this first and then get the natural log of it. You're not allowed to distribute if it's a natural log out in front. But we're going to think of this as the natural log of u. So the derivative of the natural log of u is just 1 over u. So it's 1 over this is our u. Then we have to do times the derivative of u. So what's the derivative of 3? 0. What's the derivative of negative e to the u? Negative e to the u, right? But then times what? Times 4. You have to use the chain rule. So look at our numerator. All of that needs to get multiplied, so it's going to be negative 4 e to the 4x over, here's our denominator, and that would be our final answer. Okay, so what's the derivative of e to the u without looking? e to the u times u prime, right. What's the derivative of natural log of u? Very good. All right. So you've got an assignment to do.